modding. It's responsible for some of gaming's weirdest shit. Oh my goodness! This is the best thing ever! But outside of allowing you to beat the shit out of Shrek in The Legend of Zelda, What are you doing in my swamp? or encouraging people to combat a dragon version of Macho Man Randy Savage in Skyrim, yeah. modding is also responsible for spawning some of the biggest esports titles in the world. But when did this strange practice begin, and how has it developed over time? Well, our journey takes us beyond the 90s and back to the early 1980s, where, oddly, we'll see Smurfs again. And you really can't leave this communist shit alone, can you? Hey, I don't make the rules. Montage me, bitch. These kids are playing the newest Rage in arcade game, Dragon's Lair. And liftoff, liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. As I say, the original spirit of rock and roll was just, it, it, it was meant as a form of attack. The year is 1983, and a couple of gaming enthusiasts named Andrew Johnson and Preston Nevins have decided to combine their passions for programming to create one of gaming's first ever mods for the original Castle Wolfenstein. <laughs> not that Wolfenstein. Nope, not that one. Not even that one. This one. While the two had previously altered graphics in another game called Dino Eggs, they took their modding game to the next level with Castle Smurfenstein for the Apple II by creating their own intro theme and sounds. <laughs> modding at this point was far from widespread, but by the time Doom came on the scene nearly a decade later in 1993, it was on the verge of exploding. Doom and its sequels spawned every conceivable type of mod. Some were attempts at improving aspects of the core gameplay, like Brutal Doom. Go fuck yourself! While others were complete overhauls of the game, including new weapons, maps, enemies, and theme. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. This type of mod would come to be known as a total conversion, or TC for short. Doom's developer id Software would come to support the modding effort with the release of a toolkit in the form of a WAD file. The WAD file contained graphical elements, level information, and items, allowing modders to augment them far more easily. It was clear that modding had done a lot to help popularize Doom, even if the WAD file had allowed people to create and sell their own versions of the game illegally. And despite that, id would continue to support modders' efforts with their next series, Quake. While modding was obviously gaining steam, its next big leap forward would come with the release of Valve Software's Half-Life. Half-Life was a revolutionary game in its own right for single-player first-person shooters, but on top of that, it inspired the creation of a little mod you might have heard of, Counter-Strike. As a result of Counter-Strike's widespread popularity, a year after its release, Valve brought on the mod's creators and acquired the rights to the Counter-Strike IP in 2000. And this was a pivotal moment for modding. No longer were modders seen as weird enthusiasts, but instead as legitimate game designers in their own right. I like you, but you're crazy. While FPS had long been the stomping grounds for modders, towards the end of the 90s, other genres were beginning to support modding out of the box as well. Especially real-time strategy titles like Blizzard's Warcraft 2 and Starcraft Brood War, which offered map editing tools. But it was one specific mod for Warcraft 3 that would rise to prominence above all others. 
Defense of the Ancients, or <laughs> Loosely based on an earlier StarCraft custom map called Aeon of Strife, Dota was more than just a custom map. It gave birth to a whole new genre of games, now more commonly known as MOBAs. The map was designed by Kyle Yul Summer and debuted in 2003, but the mod's creators treated it as more than just a throwaway map. They added more heroes, tried to offer new ways to play the mode, and pushed balance changes. They treated it like an actual development team would. In time, Dota became insanely popular, but because it was a mod of another company's property, it did so solely through word of mouth, and not through official advertisement. However, that changed in 2009 when Valve hired Dota's lead designer, Icefrog, to develop a sequel, Dota 2. Often I am asked, what does a hero truly need? <laughs> that is for you to decide. And it was around the same time that fledgling developer Riot Games hired Ginsu and Pendragon, who had also worked on the original Dota, to develop League of Legends. After a hot, sweaty, three-way legal battle over the Dota trademark between Blizzard, Valve, and Riot Games, the result was that Valve had the right to use the trademark commercially, which they did with the release of Dota 2 in 2013. So the three biggest esports at the time of this video, League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Dota 2, all owe their existence, in varying degrees, to mods. And even in the modern era of gaming, where microtransactions and downloadable content are the norm, modding has continued to stay relevant. Take, for example, Bethesda's stance on modding. Both the Elder Scrolls and Fallout series have been among the most popular games for modding, with Skyrim particularly showing off the creativity of the community. Oh my god! Modders are invaluable to developers, and over the years, they've been able to keep breathing life into games that, by all means, should be dead. I mean, look at this shit. Skyrim came out in 2011, and in January of 2019, it's been watched for more hours on Twitch than Red Dead Redemption 2, which only released in October of last year. The legitimacy of modders was even reaffirmed by Bethesda game director Todd Howard, who was unequivocal in an interview proclaiming them as developers. It would be an understatement to say that modding has been hugely influential over the past 30 plus years. Mods have offered players more expansive content for games that they love. You know what, I've never once in my life regret downloading this mod. Provided an avenue for talented programmers to create hilarious fluff and meme modes for our amusement. Wow. 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 And they've spawned phenomena that have taken over the gaming world. But perhaps most importantly to us, they are directly responsible for creating today's most popular esports, a trend that appears to be continuing into the future. Damn, there are some crazy mods out there. Yeah, but I prefer the ones that make the animations look better, like in Fallout 4. Smart ass. Fine. We'll do this later, but I want that interview, got me? Once you jack the core into the power armor and grab that minigun, those raiders will know they picked the wrong fight. That's an improvement? Did I stutter? I'm reminded of a quote from the Bhagavad Gita. I am become meme, destroyer of words. How do they know? How did they know about memes? Fools, bro. Three.